Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this is an intake manifold. This is a cylinder head from Mark's 318. This engine belongs to a 1968 Plymouth Barracuda, which I've done a couple episodes on. I've done several episodes on the engine, tearing down the engine, and the plan for the engine. And the most recent video I did was on the cylinder heads. These are closed chamber 273 cylinder heads, and this is what we're putting back on this engine. We're doing that for a couple reasons. One, to raise the compression ratio over an open chamber head, and two, to get this pad here for a quench area. In that video, I also explained some very basic cleanup type porting that you can do to these heads to improve things, with the biggest improvement found here around the pushrod clearance. This is actually the second head, the one I didn't do in that video, and it's nearly ready now. You'll notice the valve seats in this head are looking nice and shiny. That's because I'm currently working on dialing in the formula for doing a three or four angle valve job here at home. I've got a few of these random valve seat grinder tools. I was actually given these by Scott Smith with Harms Auto in Spokane, Washington. He donated these to the cause, for which I thank him. Between his two ancient, very well used sets and mine, I've actually come up with enough to do this job, I think. I've had questions about grinding valve seats in the past, and I'm not quite prepared to teach anyone how to do that. I'm certainly not an expert, but I've done it a couple times now with success, so maybe we'll talk about this in the future. Multiple people asked me in the comments on the cylinder head video if I have a porting template for these heads. No, I'm just winging it. Again, I'm not removing a ton of material, except for right here, you know, that got skinned up a good bit. So there's pretty much no risk of getting into water, pretty much. People asked how I could possibly know that this would work or how much power I would get or what kind of CFM would flow through these ports when I'm done. I'm not doing anything radical here. This is just basic cleanup. It's tried and true. It's been done gazillions of times. Street engine. The big takeaway is don't remove too much material. Don't get crazy enlarging the ports or anything. Just clean things up. Knock sharp edges down. Blend the valve seat into the throat. That's terrible from the factory and it's so easy to just clean that stuff up anyway haven't finished with that yet haven't finished with the exhaust crossover delete either i had a few people say that oh that's a terrible idea no street engine can run without that did you know magnum heads don't have an exhaust crossover isn't that interesting i think it's interesting there's a bunch of those with carbureted intakes running around no problem Anyway, with all that nonsense out of the way, I want to talk to you today about port matching. This is another small thing you can do that will almost certainly make an improvement in the seat of the pants power you get out of your engine. You see, your intake manifold delivers an air and fuel mixture to your cylinder head. It does that through the intake ports. Now, if the two don't match, things can get a little weird at that transition point. One thing that can happen is fuel air mixture coming from the intake port could slam into a shrouded area on the head and then the fuel pools up, falls out of suspension. The airflow can do crazy things when it's trying to ram into a brick wall. Now, if there's an overhang in the other direction, this port is smaller than this port, for example, you're not gonna have the brick wall effect, but this is a bottleneck, essentially. The best case situation is a perfect match between this port and this port. The intake manifold of choice for this application is a simple street manifold. It's the Edelbrock Performer, and it's actually labeled as the Performer 318 360. But the thing you have to know about the Performer is it uses the smaller intake port size of the 318 head. You can bolt it right on a 360, and I've done that many times with good results, but understand that the intake port is smaller than the 360 head, not the best for flow. Just for a quick eyeball on the 318 to 360 port difference, this is the intake gasket for a 318. As you can see, these ports don't fully match it, which we're gonna discuss in a second, but it's close. It's about right in height. And here's the same gasket dropped on what appears to be an unported 360 head. I suppose it could have had some work done, but it looks factory cast. Look at the overhang here. This 360 port is much, much taller than the 318 port. And it's wider too. This entire hole is open into this port. I can feel gasket on this side and on the top and it's pretty much flush in the middle and on the bottom. Incidentally, that measurable port size difference is why we're not using 360 heads on this engine. We wanna keep these smaller 318 size ports for maximum port velocity. The idea here is to make low end torque and have an efficient and responsive engine on the street. The big gigantic ports would aid in high RPM horsepower, but high RPM horsepower is not at all our goal here. So we're stuck with the smaller port size, but we do wanna get as much out of it as we can. And you'll notice comparing this Felpro 318 gasket to the ports in this head, they do not at all meet that maximum intended size. 
And to anyone with knowledge of factory Chrysler castings, that will come as no surprise. The castings of these engines essentially never match the original intended dimensions that were engineered into this engine. Production line tolerances being what they are, it really didn't matter. As long as they're close and the gasket will seal it, they're gonna send it out the door. Sloppy factory tolerances are one great reason to do this. Again, you're just cleaning up the casting and getting the most out of it you can. But there's actually another reason I've just discovered. Turns out aftermarket parts are garbage too. I know that's gonna come as a shock. But look at the difference in these ports. This one's like kind of centered in the gasket. This one's nowhere close. It's even worse on this side. This one is shifted to the complete outside of the gasket where the factory port is on the inside of the gasket. And that means there's a mismatch of like more than an eighth of an inch. That one is close to the factory sizing. This one is way off. It's actually slightly under the gasket, which just boggles the mind. And you can see the shapes on these things are in no way consistent. Even without holding the gasket up to it, it's pretty easy to look at these ports and realize one of these things is not like the other. If you're building a street engine and you don't care, you can slap those together and it will work just fine. But you're certainly not going to get the most power out of it. You could. And it's not that we're hunting for every single horsepower with this thing, but as a point of pride, I just want to do a nice job here. There's also a really good chance that this car is going to go on a chassis dyno at some point, and it'll be cool to see what we can squeeze out of this 318. So I'm going to get these ports cleaned up and matching as best as I can. To do that, I'm going to use this intake manifold gasket as a template. Now this is the 318 gasket. And as you can see, it's a pretty close match aside from this goofy overhang. The gasket locks into these pilot holes in the head and there is a little bit of movement. So you're gonna wanna center that as well as you can before you start marking. You can mark the head with spray paint. I'm just gonna use a marker and trace the hole here. There, I've got it traced onto the head and there's the intake side. As I mentioned, this one port is actually ever so slightly under the gasket. If I had a TIG welder, I could probably fill this up and then match it, smooth it down into the port, but that's kind of beyond my abilities and really splitting hairs. I'm just gonna clean it up to this line and that'll be okay. To do the porting on the iron cylinder head, I'll be using these carbide burrs. These happen to be from Mac Tools. I've gotten a lot of miles out of these and they're actually still in pretty good shape. The intake manifold is aluminum. You can't use those carbides on aluminum. They'll just gall up immediately. So you need to use a set of these. These are non-ferrous burrs. Happened to buy this set from Matco. They are not the best, actually. I've kind of chipped these on aluminum manifolds in the past, so hopefully at least one of them is still usable. It's the next day, and a couple commenters keep whining and complaining because I don't show myself working. I've never shown myself working much. It's never been the point of the channel. There are plenty of other mechanics that do that. If that's what you want, you can go find all the time lapses of pointless wrenching that you desire. But, you know, I gotta do something to appease these trolls, so. There you go, bud. Here's one almost done. If I actually hold the gasket centered, you'll see that it's pretty well matched now. The unfortunate thing is a lot of the area we're gaining here is over the pushrod clearance. So I am contouring this a bit more as I go. Remember, you really don't want to break through this or anything else, so I would not try to fully flatten that out to the shape of the port. You can see where the gasket is. Yeah, it's like inside the pushrod clearance. So unless you're going to get crazy with filling this and moving pushrods and that sort of thing, you know, kind of like the factory TA setup, you're not gonna be able to eliminate that fully when you do your port match. This is so much better than how it was cast. It's gonna be a profound improvement. Now I just have to do that 15 more times. Something to keep in mind as you're doing this, there are valve cover bolts right here between the ports in this thicker area. So make sure you don't try to open this corner all the way up perfectly. Of course, the port shape is kind of rounded anyway. So if you stick to that, you should be good. I've actually seen factory castings with not enough material in this area that are open to the valve cover bolt. I just saw a picture of another head like that on the internet the other day. It's not a big deal. Just make sure you put some thread sealer on your bolt and it'll be fine. Or you can get all crazy and fill it in with epoxy. Either way. All right, that's funny. I was right on the bleeding edge and it would have been fine, but there's a little thin spot right above that pushrod guide. And I found it. So... 
This does not go into water. It only goes into crankcase. So I can back this up, no problem. I'll probably just hit it with a couple little welds. If it went into water, that would be bad news. If you ask the general automotive population about welding on cast iron, they're going to tell you that you have to preheat it to some ridiculous temperature and you have to stick weld it with some high nickel rod. They're gonna tell you that this does not work, but they're wrong. And you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Owning a cracked Hemi block, I've gotten a crash course in cast iron welding in recent months. And I'm actually gonna be doing an Engine Wednesday video on that in the near future. All you need to know about this is, it's not even a high stress area. There's no coolant on the back side of it. There's just crankcase vapor on the back side here and there should never be enough pressure to cause any issues. You're going to find as you try to machine this repair that it's a lot harder than the cast iron. It's going to shoot sparks off if you cut it with your carbide. I don't even know if the carbide bit likes dealing with that steel filler. So I'm doing most of this with a little stone I got from the parts store. It's working pretty well. Like it never happened, basically. Yeah, that'll work. So at this point, I'm pretty much done with the port match, at least on the cylinder head side. And obviously it's not 100% perfect. There are little spots of overhang. But in general, it's easy to see how big of an improvement this is. Before I move this head off the bench, I am gonna knock out the exhaust crossover delete. That way, this one is officially done. Yep, it's welded. Yep, it's grinded. I should finish the other head, but instead, I'm just gonna knock out the intake manifold. It shouldn't take too long. Of course, this is aluminum, which is much softer and should be pretty easy to machine. Yeah, I kinda just choose the material but it also wants to bounce around and do horrible stuff. So you gotta be pretty careful controlling the tool. That's an issue with the carbide on the iron head as well, but it's way worse with this. Maybe because of the lower number of cutting teeth there. Also note, this does get jammed up with little bits of aluminum, which is very irritating. I guess I should mention there are a few other tools I'm using to do this. And one of those is a set of files. I've got some different flavors here with some different levels of aggressiveness. This in particular seems pretty good for scraping away aluminum and doing so in a somewhat orderly manner. Getting close with the non-ferrous bit and then finishing this with a little bit of filing and a little bit of sanding seems to be just about the hot ticket. Now I showed you how terrible these port shapes were to begin with. It's interesting to note on some of them, it's just right here at the port where it suddenly like kicks up. So I'm really not having to remove much material to get that straightened out. I will say that seems to be the case on the tops of the ports here. And yeah, on the bottom of some, there's like just a quick little turn. Of course, this is a dual plane, so the top plane is shaped a little bit differently than the bottom one. But on the sides of the ports, I'm having to grind a good ways back and then file it, smooth it all out and get it looking good. I've almost got these two. Obviously, I need to work the corners a little bit more there. I'm gonna grab a round file to do that. I'm just having no luck with that bit in the corners. It wants to jump around and be all horrible. Unfortunately, I'm totally out of time to finish this. And because it's currently Tuesday, and this is tomorrow's Engine Wednesday, I'm gonna leave you here. Now there's one more point I need to make. When you're installing the intake, you need to make sure that the head and the intake and the gasket all align correctly. As you can see, there is a good bit of movement for this manifold gasket. It needs to be centered on the head. And then when the intake goes down, it needs to be torqued evenly, with the idea being that it settles down evenly from side to side and doesn't end up cocked one way or the other. The best thing to do is put an inspection camera down the ports and verify that they're actually correctly aligned with the heads. I understand that's not gonna be possible for everybody to do, but it's a good idea. If you encounter a serious mismatch there, you may need to machine the intake surfaces of the head or of the manifold itself to make sure everything aligns. And obviously doing that is gonna involve a machinist and is way beyond the scope of this video. I will tell you though, if you're trying to use the corks that are included with the gasket sets on the ends of your aftermarket intake manifold, you're probably gonna have a bad time. And the intake is probably not gonna settle correctly against the heads. I've had that happen before. Obviously I'm not doing this right now, but I am going to cut out the divider wall between the two sides of the dual plane manifold here. That can have an effect similar to adding an open spacer, which we don't really have the height for on this car. Essentially it equalizes vacuum signals between the two sides of the intake and that can improve performance. Oh, and I really shouldn't have to tell you this, but when you're done grinding, make sure you clean these pieces thoroughly with air, maybe with brake clean, gasoline, more air, whatever you have to do. Get that debris out of your intake, out of your cylinder heads. 
Anyway, hopefully you found this guide useful, vaguely educational or something. If you do have any questions about this, feel free to drop them in the comments. I do read all of those, so I'll get to it. As ever, thank you very much for watching. And remember, this sucks.